everyone, my name is Rachel and today I'm going to be talking about a rabbit's digestive system. So this is kind of a complicated topic and I really hope that this video is informative for you. I wanted to make a video and include some information that you might not find anywhere else unless you do a lot of research on it. So hopefully this is the video for you. Also, if you hear any noises or see anyone come through, it could be my dog or Heidi because I have both of them out right now. So just so you know, be aware of that. Also, I just want to mention that if you're here just to see the bunnies, I completely understand. I will include clips of healthy bunnies at the end of the video. A few little disclaimers before we get started. I'm not an expert. I don't study veterinary medicine. All the information I get here is from external sources that I trust. Second, if you find something that's incorrect, please let me know and I will either pin your comment or update um, the description or whatever just to make it available so people know the correct information if you find anything that's incorrect. I don't think there is anything that's incorrect, but I do wanna put that out there. I wanna have a continual conversation about this because it is such an important topic. Hi, Heidi, I don't know if you guys can see her. <laughs> hey, baby. Mm. Yes, she's hanging out. Oh, she's a little scared, but oh, oh, okay. She doesn't want to be held right now. <laughs> Third, I may pronounce something wrong. So like I said, I'm not an expert. I might pronounce something wrong, but I will hopefully give you the correct spelling on the screen. The first thing I'm going to talk about are the steps in the digestive tract. So if you want to see an overview, here is that picture. I'm actually going to scoot here. So then hopefully I can add some pictures here hopefully this works but um here's an overview and i'm actually going to show a different picture or a different graphic uh, to talk about it just because it's a little bit easier to see the overview it's a little hard to see the words so yeah here's the overview and here is the graphic we're going to talk about step number one in the digestive tract is the food enters the mouth and the teeth grind it up the food is then mixed with saliva and travels down the esophagus into the stomach as food enters the stomach, it is mixed with acid to sterilize it. This is also where the first enzymes are added to start the digestion process. A fun fact here is rapid digestive systems only go one way. So anything that enters the stomach has to proceed through the entire digestive tract. Rabbits cannot throw up like cats do. So for example, if they get a fur ball, they can't throw that up. It has to pass through their digestive tract. The third step is food travels down the small intestine, which is responsible for absorbing nutrients. Nutrients absorbed include nutrients from proteins, sugars, and starches. Hey, future Rachel editing here. Sorry I keep looking down. If you notice that, it's just because I'm looking at my notes. There's then the second round of digestive enzymes added to the process. These enzymes further break down your rabbit's food and then those nutrients can pass through the intestinal lining into the bloodstream. What's left then enters the large intestine, which is not shown on the diagram, I believe, but this is where water resorption occurs. The fiber then goes into the colon, which sorts the fiber into digestible fiber and indigestible fiber. What's digestible goes to the cecum. The cecum is really where it gets interesting and we'll come back to that. Then the indigestible fiber passes through the colon and is left as droppings, fecal droppings. These are the droppings that you see your rabbits leave. But the cecum is really interesting because it's home to colonies of bacteria that will further break down the digestible fiber. And this digestible fiber is broken down into its nutrients at the cecum. However, the cecum can only absorb a little bit of the nutrients that it produces from this digestible fiber. So how do the rest of the nutrients get absorbed? Well, this is through cecotropes. So cecotropes are basically the nutrients that the bacteria fermented and broke down in the cecum. And it's the rest of the nutrients that the cecum can absorb. And they are surrounded by a layer of mucus. Cecotropes then pass through the colon and are left as droppings as well, except rabbits eat them directly from their bottom. So often you don't see cecotropes. However, if you see one or two, don't worry about it. Sometimes rabbits use them to mark. So just a little heads up. Hi, Heidi. What does this mean for a bunny's digestive system? So the fact that bunnies have a cecum and can reabsorb nutrients through cecotropes, it makes their digestive systems great for processing fiber. If you think about it, we always hear that hay has a lot of fiber. Well, that is why rabbits need so much fiber and so much hay. Hay is actually 80% of a rabbit's diet. And the reason why is because their digestive system is so wired 
to pass fiber. This special process makes the rabbit's digestive system very great for processing fiber. However, it is really sensitive. So if you don't have enough fiber in your rabbit's diet, this can slow or even stop the digestive tract and the digestive tract is supposed to constantly be moving. When this happens, GI stasis occurs, which we'll talk about in a minute. On the contrary, if you have too many proteins or carbohydrates, this can cause the rabbit's digestive system to go into overdrive, which is also not something that you want. Therefore, rabbits need a balance of the correct nutrients to thrive and be healthy. Also, the right amount of nutrients depends on the stage of life that the rabbit is in. Hey guys, future racial editing here. Super frustrated because I lost a lot of footage, but I wanna go over this. Sorry if you're staring at my face for a little bit, but I wanna go over this because it's just so important. It's some information about GI stasis. So when the digestive system isn't working properly and it slows down too much or stops, the rabbit enters GI stasis, also known as gut stasis. This is a state that can potentially be deadly. So what happens is bad bacteria builds up in the intestines, painful bloating occurs um, because of the gas that's created, and then that causes your bunny to lose motivation to eat or drink, which compounds the problem, make it sit worse. Because remember, the whole problem was started because the digestive system was slowed down. So if they stop eating, then it's going to make it worse. Causes of GI stasis can include a high starch or low fiber diet, which we previously discussed why hay is so important, um, as well as stress, like losing a bonded partner, um, pain from underlying issues, or lack of exercise. If there's anything that you get from this video, please know that if your rabbit has not pooped in 12 hours, this is an emergency. You have to go to your rabbit savvy vet immediately. I'm gonna discuss a little bit later in the video some tips that I would do do or some things that I would do if I noticed my rabbit has stopped pooping or stopped eating before I would hit that 12 hours but know that if it has been 12 hours you need to take your rabbit to the vet immediately because this can be deadly. So what should you expect from your vet if you, once you take your rabbit to the vet for GI stasis. So the first thing you're gonna expect is an assessment. Um, and obviously it can vary by how um, vets do this, but one thing they might do is determine if there is, well, they're probably gonna do this. They're gonna determine if there's an underlying condition causing the stasis and treat that respectively. And they also might do x-rays to assess the blockage and or presence of gas. So treatment by your vet, what should you expect? So they may give you motility drugs to get the digestive system moving again. An example is smethicone. I might be pronouncing that wrong, but you find that in infant gas relief drops, which is something to have in your rabbit emergency kit. Basically, you get the unscented um, infant gas relief drops. You can get them from like Walmart or whatever, and you can put them on their favorite vegetable as long as they're still eating. And once they eat the vegetable, that can help um, just break down any gas bubbles that they might have. Your vet also might give you some IV fluids to soften um, the blockage that's in the intestines if there is one. They may also give some pain meds to help with the painful bloating. Um, they may also suggest you syringe feed critical care so they can get essential nutrients. I'm going to talk a little bit about um, some different recovery foods in a little bit, um, but critical care is the most common. They also might um, prescribe antibiotics to combat the overgrowth in bacteria. So rabbits in GI stasis can make a full recovery if they get immediate treatment, but remember treatment in a timely manner is super important and you cannot just wait till the next day because your rabbit could die. You need to get them immediate treatment. So how to prevent GI stasis? You're going to want a proper diet with lots of fiber. You're gonna want your diet, your rabbit's diet to be at least 80% grass hay. That's really important. We talked about why fiber is so important previously. Um, that also means probably not too many treats and make sure the treats that you're giving are healthy. You also wanna to try to limit stress as much as possible. You wanna bunny proof so your rabbit doesn't have access to things it's not supposed to. For example, if it chewed a wire and burned its mouth, it could stop eating and go into stasis because of that because it hurts to eat. So proper bunny proofing is important to keep your rabbit safe and out of stasis. Also regular vet checkups to make sure your bunny doesn't have any issues like dental problems that would make them stop eating. Um, also to have 
rabbit. Um, also, you should have critical care and a rabbit emergency kit on hand and administer according to vet's orders. So I'm going to talk a little bit about your rabbit emergency kit and specifically critical care right now. Sorry my camera died, but there are also other types of nutrient recovery food. I would just make sure to have one of them on hand. You can check with your vet to see which is best and what will work best for you. Another thing to do, which I mentioned before with the fur balls, is to regularly brush your rabbit to help prevent fur balls because that can often be a blockage in your rabbit's digestive system tract. Finally, listen to your rabbit savvy vet. Make sure you do your research on rabbits. Get informed on what they need, what their care is, and what they're not allowed to have. That will help to lower your chances of your rabbit getting GI stasis. If your rabbit does get GI stasis though, no, it's not your fault. There are things that you can do to help prevent it. But of course, sometimes it's inevitable and it's bound to happen. So don't beat yourself up about it if your rabbit does go into stasis. It's not necessarily your fault. The last thing I wanna talk about is what I would do. Remember, I'm not a professional. I'm just a bunny owner who's done a lot of research, but this is kind of my thought process if I notice that my rabbit has stopped pooping or stopped eating stopped eating i'm gonna be more concerned my rabbits have never stopped eating so i would definitely be more concerned i think i'd probably call my vet right away but i have noticed milo has stopped pooping before because he, i think he had a little bit of a fur blockage so this was kind of my steps and my thought process in going through it so the first thing is to give them a papaya tablet i always have those on hand um, in my rabbit emergency kit Papaya has these special enzymes that help break down fur. So if your rabbit is shedding a lot, it's a great idea to give them a papaya tablet every day during their shedding season as their treat. Um, I totally recommend that. I think it's great because it'll help your rabbit's digestive system keep moving um, and not let any fur blockages get in the way. I'm gonna wait a couple hours, probably like an hour, I guess not a couple hours, I'm gonna wait an hour and I'm gonna see if that helped, if that made them poop, which has always worked in the past for me, but it might not work for you. So, you know, you might have to proceed on to the next step. So if this hasn't worked, I'm going to call my vet. I'm gonna let them know what's going on. I'm gonna tell them, hey, it's been about four hours. My rabbit hasn't pooped or eaten. I'm worried, you know, is there any recommendations you have? I might need to bring them in, that kind of stuff. I'm gonna be in communication with my vet, which I think is really important. Um, you don't wanna wait till like the last minute and then be like, oh my gosh, I don't know where to go. Because if you talk to your vet, ahead of time, then you already have plans to, if they're not open, where you're gonna go, what emergency you're gonna have to do. Sorry if you hear that, that's Heidi digging back there. Depending on my vet's recommendation, I might give them some infant gas relief drops on vegetables. I have that in my rabbit emergency kit, where basically you get the unscented one and you can put it on their favorite vegetable and have them eat it, hopefully if your rabbit's still eating. Um, and that can help break down any gas bubbles they might have. You also could give them a belly massage, but these things I would check with your vet for First. And lastly, I'm just going to listen to my vet. I'm gonna take them in if they tell me to take them in. Sorry if the camera moved, my camera stopped recording so I had to record this part again. But I'm going to listen to my vet's recommendations. Whatever they are, I'm gonna to listen to them. I think it's always important to check with your vet and follow your vet's orders to a T. So that's all I have for you guys today. I really hope you enjoyed this video and it was informative and you learned a lot. Hopefully some of these tips can help you prevent a GI stasis as well as just keep your rabbit happy and healthy. Speaking of happy and healthy rabbits, here are some clips of my bunnies. Thanks so much for watching guys. Don't forget to subscribe down below. See you next time.